last uh, fill in the blanks for today for this semester. Uh, we're talking about adjectives, and so adjectives are used to describe stuff. Words that describe describing words. Anything that has to do descriptions, it's an adjective. Um, let's take a look. Placement. You ready for this? This is where it gets kind of confusing here. Placement of adjectives. In English, the adjective is placed where? Before. Before. Uh, the noun is describing. Okay, not in every language does it do this. Okay, English is one of those few that puts your adjective before the thing it's describing. Crazy. Who does that? English does that. For instance, if I would say, think of a red... What comes to mind? Are you, are you guys just picturing the color red right now? See, so you guys are picturing all different things that are red, okay? But I was going to say a red apple. Uh, there we go. You're, you're thinking on the same thing. You know, great minds think alike, so. But, yeah. In Spanish, we, would no, we wouldn't tell the... We wouldn't say the description first, okay? We wouldn't have the description... First, we would have the thing first, you know, we would we'd say, think of a house red. Is that how we would say that in Spanish? We would, so we picture of an, uh, the item first and then the description, okay? Uh, think of a house tiny. A tiny house. So we come up with the description after we think of the thing, okay? So... Like when, he, when I said red, you guys were all thinking of all these red things, thread items that, um, that you know, where in Spanish we, we do the thing first and then the description, okay? That's where it says, in Spanish, not so, it is placed after, after. So, sentence structure, here. This is the sentence structure, sentence structure. Um, in English, we would say, now here's the thing. Guess what? Is it before or after? Where, where is the description here? Is it before or after? It really doesn't matter right here because it's like comes after the uh, the a the action, okay? Uh, what am I talking about this when it's before and after? When it is, you ready for this? Next to each other. That's where I'm talking about before or after, okay? Now, sentence structure in Spanish, if you... Same thing right here, look. Same thing. The dog is red. El perro es rojo. The dog is red. In Spanish... If you want to say the dog is red in Spanish, the sentence structure would literally be the dog is red. Uh, el perro es rojo. Word for word, placement exactly alike. Uh, when I was talking to like Japanese, and Japanese is a little weird because the action goes at the end of the sentence. So yeah, it's kind of weird how they do it that way. They were, I was trying to figure that out. They'd be like, red, the dog is, is how you would say that, I think, in Jap Japanese. The action is at the end. So it's kind of interesting. All right, so when it is next to each other, this is where it goes before and after, okay? So when you have the action and, no, when you have the adjective and the noun, in English is before, in Spanish it is after. So if you want to say the red dog in Spanish, we'd have to say literally the dog red. El perro rojo. And let's continue. Uh, se llama Ro uh, Clifford. El perro rojo se llama Clifford. What on earth does this mean in English? Uh huh. His name is Clifford. He calls himself Clifford, the red dog. How many grew up reading that book? Okay. Yeah, I think I read one, maybe. Uh, they do have it in Spanish, too, that series, so. Uh, here are some adjectives from the book. Let's see. Can you go ahead and fill that out on your own real quick? I'm gonna before I scare scare you or show you the answers. Let's take a look here. What does it look like? Okay. Yeah. Oof. Let's see. As a class, collective class, what do you think organizado is? Atletico. Grande. Grant, what do you... Yeah, you know what that is, right? Grande, Grant? Ah, <laughs> si, senor. Great and grande. And big. Large. Huge. Comico! Comical. Funny. 
Perezoso. Yeah. Fail. That's a new one. It's not in the book. I don't, yeah, it's... I don't think they gave that one. Uh, we'll come back to that one. What is bueno? Alto. Oh, wait. Bajo. Yeah, alto. Alto Grant. And then viejo. Yeah, now, going back to fail, if you notice, I kind of put the opposites next to each other, so if guapo is good looking, what is fail? Oogly. <laughs> oogly. An oogly word. <laughs> I think when I first saw the word ugly in, in, uh, in English, I was like, that's not how you spell ugly. You know, I thought it was like U G H L Y. Like UG. This spells oogly. Okay. Um so let's take a look. So these are these are adjectives from the book that uh they want you to know by heart, okay? And I put the opposites next to each other. Um now, in the book, here's the problem with the book here, is that they just give you, like, the examples they give you, like that organizado, desorganizado, atletico, inteligente, grande, pequeño, comico, trabajador, uh, perezoso, guapo, feo, malo, bueno, bajo, uh, alto, joven, okay, these, and viejo. These are all, like, in the masculine singular form. That's how they give you that in the book. It's the masculine singular form, okay? What does that mean? It means that Organizado, if it's a feminine singular, what do you do with the O? Show, change it to the O to an A. So, organizada is an organized female. Um, now, um, what about, um, we're, we're trying to go over like plural. Well, how do I make organizado plural? Add the letter S, because if it ends in a vowel, you add the letter S. Now, how do I make organizada plural? Add the letter S. Correct. Organizadas. Uh, organized females. Alright, so that's a good thing that you guys know that kind of stuff. That's good. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. You ready for this? In Spanish, uh, adjectives in Spanish must agree in gender and number uh, of what they are describing. That does not make any sense in English. When we say the big red, the, the red house, red is red no matter if it's house or houses. You know, it doesn't matter if it's, you don't say the, the reds houses, you know, we say the red house, the red houses, you know. In Spanish, you literally have to say the, like, houses reds. Like, red has to have an S on it. That doesn't make sense in, in, in English that a red would have to have an S, but in Spanish, Everything has to agree with each other in gender and in number of what it's describing. Okay, so like for instance, this small house. All right, first of all, we have to do a little bit of word order change. So we can't say the small house in Spanish. Literally, how would we have to say it? The house small. The house small. And that's what I put on here, the house small. Google does not like me to put that. Oh, it says the house is small. That's what Google wants me to put. Okay, so how do you say house in Spanish? Anybody know what house is in Spanish? Uh, yeah. Casa, yeah, casa, la casa. Like mi casa is tu casa, okay. Um, now, um, since casa is feminine, uh, I have to make my adjective feminine. So like, is it, you know, is it masculine, feminine, casa is feminine, la casa. Uh, is it singular or plural? Is la casa singular or plural? It's singular, so that I do not have to put an S on that, okay? So yeah, I would say la casa pequeña is how you say the small house. Alright, let's move on to the good-looking teacher. The good-looking teacher. It's good-looking one word. I think if we put a uh, hyphen. hyphen in there, right? Let's make it right. All right, so in English we say the good-looking teacher. Uh, in Spanish we have to reorganize. 
change things up a little bit, we would say in Spanish, literally, the teacher, good looking. And anybody know how to say teacher in Spanish? Aha, el profesor. And there's another way to say el maestro. And I'm going to go ahead and put like this, male. See, there's no way to identify that in English. We just say the, the, the good-looking teacher. In Spanish, there is a way to identify male or female. All right, so el profesor, how do you say it? Good-looking is guapo. Now, is profesor masculine? It's masculine, right? Is it singular or singular? So I have to go with the masculine singular form of uh, the adjective, guapo. All right, now it's getting a little bit complicated because I am adding... Uh, some multiple things here. Okay, so the ugly ducklings. In Spanish, we'd have to say the duck the ducklings ugly. All right, so there's the ducklings ugly. All right, now I'm just going to show you what how to say the ugly duckling uh, uh, ugly ducklings in Spanish. Here we go. Boom. All right, so we have to say literally the ducks, los patos. And then, all right, so patos is masculine. Masculine, plural, MP. So I'm going to have to use the MP of feos, okay? So feo is masculine. And then to make it plural, you just add a letter S. Feos, los patos feos, the ugly ducklings. Literally, the ugly ducks. There's no way to say ducklings. You just say ducks, the ugly ducks. All right, I think there's one more example here. Hard working, the hard working women. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. In how do you say? Oh, how do? You, okay, I'm gonna give you a, an example of uh, of a word, and you're gonna put it in 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 plural. Like for instance, man, woman. See, like why 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 isn't that not mans or women's? No, they had to change it up a little bit, make it more complicated in English. In Spanish, you just add an S to it if it ends in a vowel. Add ES if it ends in a consonant. Okay, uh, hardworking, the hardworking women. In Spanish, we'd have to say the woman hardworking. Yes, sir. I actually don't know. <laughs> Should we figure that out? Uh, should we figure out why hardworking doesn't have an I? Uh, let's see. What happens if I do put a hyphen in hardworking? Nope, they don't. They say it's not incorrect, huh? I never thought of that either. Hardworking, good-looking. I don't know. That's. Huh? So this, for some reason, that is not that we don't know. Good-looking has an hyphen. Hardworking does not. <laughs> That sounds a lot complicated. <laughs> that sounds very complicated. Huh. Good thing we're learning Spanish, right? <laughs> no hyphenations in Spanish. Thank goodness. There, yeah, we don't have anything hyphenated in Spanish. Nada. Nothing. All right. Um, let's take a look. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, okay. The hardworking women. All right. So, in Spanish, woman is la mujer. All right, la mujer. So I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm gonna like, like it's la mujer is woman. All right. So how do I make woman into women? In Spanish, you have to change la to las, and then mujer. Do we remember what we said? If it ends in a consonant, we add the es. Okay. So that's why it's las mujeres. All right. Now trabajador. Trabaja. Where will well, uh, trabajador is hardworking man. Trabajadores is hardworking men and women. But what is a hardworking woman? Is trabajadora. Now, since we're talking about multiple things, what does my trabajadora 
turn into? If it ends with a vowel, the letter S. Whoop, where, where, where did it go? Trabajador. Ras, there we go. So that's the answer right there. Hardworking women. Hardworking woman is Las Mujeres. Trabajadoras. Oh, there's always exceptions. We always love the exception rule. Woohoo. All right, adjectives dealing with quantity and quality can be placed. You ready for this? Before the noun. It can be. Doesn't necessarily that they're always there, but it can be. Okay, so let's take a look at some review. Uh, adjectives dealing with quantity and quality. All right, what does bueno mean? Malo. Mucho. And then, now I might just call you Grand Grant from here on out, man. Right. Instead of Grande Grant. I'm just going to call you Grand Grant. You know what that makes you, right, if I say Grand Grant? Great. Yeah, so great. Great Grant. All right, so, good days. How do you say good days in Spanish? Buenos dias. Yeah. That's what you're literally saying. Good days. Hopefully you don't just have one. You have many good days. Buenos dias. That's why we say buenos dias in Spanish and not dias buenos. Yeah, in, in Spanish the correct phrase is buenos dias. Whereas if we were to follow this rule where it's always going after, it would say dias buenos. But since we're dealing with quantity and quality... Uh, we put the buenos right before it. Buenos dias. Good morning. Good good day. Literally good days. All right, let's take a look. The bad student. How do you do the bad student in Spanish? There's two ways. El estudiante malo. Or, like we said, el malo estudiante. Now, here's the thing, with this, we don't have gender, but in Spanish, with this, we have gender, okay? So if I want to do, like, the, the bad female student, I would say, El goes to la. Yeah. And how do you say student in Spanish for a female student? Estudiante. Ante does not change. Ante is going to be ante no matter what, girl or guy, okay? Now, what about bad how do you say bad? All right, malo, but we have to change that to the feminine version of it is mala. Or I could say la mala estudiante. So either either or, it actually does not matter which way you say it, especially for bad. It can be either or. And last one, thank you much. How do you say thank you much? Ah, so gracias muchas is, it, that's why we say muchas gracias instead of gracias muchas. The great teacher is, how, is el gran maestro. What if you wanted to say, what happens if you like said this one right here, if you said, what happens if you said el grande? Which grande can go before or after? Uh, we could say professor. All right? What does the grande professor mean? <laughs> yeah, the big, the large, the huge teacher. So yeah, gran is great. Grande is big, large, huge. Okay, so or you could say it this way: el grande, el profesor grande, or el profesor, el profesor grande. If it's a huge, large teacher. But no, yeah. You could put it either or, gran or grande. The thing is, if you put it before, like this, grande goes to gran. El gran profesor. El gran maestro. Alright, so some fun adjectives that, according to the Google search, the most 
interesting adjectives in Spanish are as following. Uh, Ethan, you should know one of these. One of these adjectives. Can you tell me what eficiente means? Yeah. Good job, eficiente, Ethan. All right, so here, what what do I have you guys fill out here? I think it either every or, I think is what we have. Okay, right there. All right, so let me go ahead and just go through these with you. Desgraciado, ungrateful. Inesperado, unexpected. Inexacto, inaccurate, incorrect. Ridiculo, ridiculous. Sabio, wise. Asustado, frightened, or scared. Scared. Asqueroso, gross. Revolting. Disgusting. Gross. Abundante, abundant. Travieso, mischievous. Genuino, genuine. Resistente, tough. Resilient. Resistant. Emocionante looks like emotional, but it's actually exciting, thrilling, exhilarating. Incomodo, awkward, uncomfortable. Uh, meticuloso, meticulous. Careful, thorough. And then Ethan, eficiente, eficiente Ethan, efficient, productive. Fascinante, fascinating, enthralling, riveting. Increíble is incredible. Alright, so tomorrow we're going to be practicing or using like adjectives to describe things. Why do we need adjectives to describe things? Makes things more interesting. For instance, um, if I said, Ethan es eficiente. Ethan is efficient. Ethan no es, uh, no es travieso. Do you agree, Ethan? Okay. Travieso, mischievous. All right, now, here's the other thing. Now, I was just describing Ethan, okay? I'm going to describe Jessica. Jessica es sabia. Sabia, right here. Si o no? No, sabia. Do you, I, you see how I did that? I can't say sabio. I have to say sabia because I'm describing you as a wise, wise sabia. Would you say that sabia? No. Well, how would you, how would you describe yourself, Jessica? Increíble. Fascinante. <laughs> If it was, if it ends with an O, I have to change the O to an A to make it feminine. If it ends, if it doesn't do that, then it works either way, okay? Resistente, if it's a guy or girl, I can say resistente no matter what, resilient. All right, now, if that's if I'm describing people. If I'm describing things, it works the same way. O goes to A for feminine things. Uh, if it doesn't end like that way, it just it stays the same. Resistente, emocionante. All right, uh, so there's a whole list of other vocab, uh, not vocab, adjectives that are just, there's like a hundred and something adjectives. There's a lot of words to describe things. Valiente. Jessica is valiente. Si. Muy valiente. Uh, who, who is, who is torpe? Is there anybody torpe in here? <laughs> torpe. Torpe. Uh, okay. I think that's it. That will be it for now. Serio.